Hello all. Welcome to the web application pen testing class on Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we will look at HTTP digest authentication more from an RFC 2069 perspective. Now if you're wondering why I mentioned the RFC, it will be clear in just a minute. So what is digest authentication or why was it created in the very first place? Now basic authentication, which we've looked at in the last couple of videos, unfortunately sends the user and password in plain text. Yes, we do base 64 encode it, but honestly encoding does not equal encryption, right? And this is the reason why typically it is very, very insecure, uh, especially in today's world where you may access most of your uh, websites and things like that over public networks using wireless, maybe even at your home using wireless. And unfortunately, if there is no encryption or the encryption is easily breakable, then someone can eavesdrop on the connection uh, gather the Wireshark traces and then go ahead and decode the username and pass. Now Digest Authentication tries to address this problem by sending a hash of the password rather than the password itself. Now Digest Auth is actually mentioned in two RFCs. The first RFC is 2069 which is what we will discuss in this video. And later on, they added more enhancements to make digest authentication more secure uh, in RFC 2617, right? Which we will also discuss later. Okay, so RFC 2069. Now this may look complicated, but it's actually really very simple. Now here is what happens when the client sends a request to the server to access a resource uh, which is actually protected by digest authentication, then the server sends back a 401 unauthorized and in the www-authenticate header, it mentions digest, mentions the realm, whatever the realm uh, the server admin may have set and then it sends two long random values. One is called the nonce and the other is called opaque. Right now, when your client receives this, which means your browser in the most typical case, it will prompt you for a username and password. Now, after you've entered the username and password, assuming it's the correct combination, uh, the browser sends back a response in which there is an authorization header, which mentions it is for digest rather than basic as we had seen previously. The username is mentioned as is in plain text. The realm is the same, matches what it had received from the server. Uh, the nonce also has to be the same. And if you kind of quickly go down, the opaque is the same as well. And after that, you have the URI. This is really the resource we are trying to access, which is protected uh, by digest authentication. And then finally, you actually see a response, which is a value, which again looks pretty long and random. Now, in reality, using a bunch of quantities, which includes your password and other things, your browser derives this response and sends it back. The server verifies it and then decides uh, whether to allow you access to the resource or not. Now, what I want to really kind of go ahead and uh, convey in this video is how this response is created. So let's look at that. Now the response calculation as complicated as it looks like the moment you look at this page, it's actually very simple. Uh, the hash is actually created using MD5, which is a well-known hashing algorithm. And here is how the hashes are created. There are two hashes which are created initially. Hash one actually creates an MD5 hash over the username colon realm colon password. So here is an example. Let's say you entered a username admin. The realm is Pentester Academy. 
and the password is ASDSS, then uh, we go ahead and create a hash of admin colon pentester academy colon ASDSS and that is stored in a quantity called hash one. Now after that we create yet another hash, let's call it hash two and that is over the method colon URI. Now method is whether it's a get or a post with which we are trying to access the resource and URI is really the actual path of the resource we are trying to access on the server. So let's say as an example slash lab slash web app slash digest two slash one, right? So these two hashes are first created and then the response is actually created by doing an MD5 of hash one colon the nouns colon hash two. Now it's clear to you that hash one was actually generated through a combination of username, realm and password. Hash two was generated using a combination of method and URI and nonce. This is really that long random value which the client had received from the server when it tried to access the restricted resource. Opaque does not play any role uh, in RFC 2069 to create the response. Right now, this response value is what is sent by the client and the server goes ahead and follows the exact same process with the username and password which it has on its side. And if the response matches, then access to the resource is allowed. If it does not match, then the server once again sends back a 401 unauthorized. Now, there are a lot of other things which come into play, which is how often does the nouns change, uh, the role of opaque and all of that, which I'm kind of leaving out simply because you'd have to pretty much go through the whole RFC for all the nitty gritty details. I think understanding how the hash is created from the username, password and realm uh, and after that how the response is calculated is sufficient depth from a pen testing perspective as we will see when you take on the different challenges I have created for this section. Now let me actually show you a live demo of how this would look like. So I'm using challenge five and you can go to the web application challenges section on Pentester Academy uh, to have a look at that. And let me, so challenge five, let's open up Wireshark, start sniffing, apply a filter for HTTP, So we are looking at HTTP. Now let me go ahead and run challenge five, click on enter pen tester academy, prompts me for a username and password. Let me put in admin password, doesn't work. But if I go back in here and I actually start looking at this, uh, if you notice, this was really the first request which went in, a get request. And this had the server respond back with a WW authenticate. And if you notice, it says digest realm pen tester academy, uh, nonce long value and opaque is basically blank, which is, which is perfectly okay. There is no real problem with it. Uh, now to this the client responds back with authorization digest username admin realm once again pen tester academy which is what match the server's response and if you notice the nonce which is same as what we found before if you notice in the last uh, unauthorized message the nonce value was 78991 78991, that's pretty much what the client has used. Then you have the URI and then you have the final response, right? And because the final response does not match, probably because the username and password does not match, the server sends back another unauthorized message, 
uh, with again the same www authenticate header realm pen tester academy the nouns and opaque and stale equals true which is a parameter uh, you don't need to kind of worry about right now and let's say we put in the right username and password let's see what happens let me restart this once again and let me actually go ahead and figure out what the username and password I had kind of set okay so we go back in here admin and then this is ASDDS now it says challenge cracked if we go back in here if you notice here was the original request from the client and this basically has your entire authorization header which is admin realm pen tester academy nouns uri response blah 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 and because this response is a valid response the server replies back with a 200 okay and that is nothing but this page which gets displayed right Awesome, so I would really recommend that you try this out yourself with Wireshark. It's important you understand how the headers interplay with each other. Uh, and keep in mind that what we have taken up right now is a pure RFC 2069 implementation. Now in the next video, I will show you how to compute all of these hashes so that you have some idea about what is happening in the background and you can even take on tougher challenges where tools might fail. So that's all for this video, guys. Thank you. Uh, and uh, well, that's all. Thank you.